Hello, my name's Dr. Samantha Carrasco. I'm an examiner, trainer, and moderator for ABRSM, and I'm also the head of keyboard at Peter Simmons College. So as a brief introduction to our scale discussion today, we thought we'd highlight some of the key changes to the new exciting piano syllabus. So grades one to five will have a very, very clear structure where each scale will be introduced just hand separately and then at the next grade it will be hands together which is very different from before where there was a little bit of ambiguity between which scales were hands together and which scales were hands separately. And grades six to eight will be structured around these four different key centres. So you'll be working within four key groups at each grade. One of the big changes is that at grade five, we won't be doing the three octave range. It did always sit with a very odd rhythm and either throw us into triplets, but it will either be two octaves or four octaves at the higher grades. That makes it much simpler. At grade five, we'll be introducing a little bit of right hand, left hand only staccato playing to prepare for staccato playing from grade six onwards. And we've taken out the grade one descending scale option just to keep it in line with all of the other, uh, other grades. One of the really, really welcome changes to this is that the dominant sevenths, like in other instruments, they resolve to the tonic. So rather than going back down and staying in the dominance, they resolve to the tonic, which makes much more musical sense. And also it sounds, it's much more useful to practice that skill as that's something that we find ourselves doing, resolving to the tonic. Hello, my name's Lee O'Hara. I'm an examiner, moderator and presenter for the Associated Board. And it's great to be here today to answer your questions about the new scale requirements. Thank you so much for sending in so many interesting questions, which we're looking forward to answering for you today. Our first question is about the overlap period. So I'm going to hand over to Sam, who's going to answer that one. The new scale syllabus comes into effect with the new piano syllabus. There is the overlap period of a whole year. So if you're doing the syllabus from 2019 and 2020, then you use the old syllabus scales. But if you're using the syllabus 2021 and 22, the new piano syllabus, you use the new piano scales. What we don't want to happen is a combination of old scales and new pieces or, or vice versa. The next question is about whether or not we've made the requirements easier with this revision. I would say, no, we haven't made things easier, but hopefully more manageable. Um, we have indeed decreased the volume of scales in each grade, and there are fewer, especially from grade five, where we used to have to do all keys. But remember, all the scales are still there. You will cover all keys between grades one and five and between six and eight. They will be assessed in the same way, and the examiner will be asking the same number of scales. So it's more a case of quality rather than quantity, if you like. And I think what we're looking for hasn't changed. We just hope that students will find it much more manageable and realistic to have fewer scales, especially in the higher grades, so they can focus on the things that really matter. One of the questions is about whether there's any extra publications to support the new piano syllabus. Um, yes is the answer to that. Uh, we have the brand new scale books that you see here. They're a really clear format and with a particularly useful guide at the, on the back page with the new scale requirements for grades one to five if you're doing a grade within that barrier and then the new scale requirements between six to eight. So it's very clear in the books what the new scale requirements are, what the examiner will be asking for. In addition to this, we have a fantastic new publication, which is the Scales Explorer for Piano, written by Alan Bullard. We're all great, but we're all very familiar with Alan's writing, and he's really gone to town exploring descriptive pieces and exploring the key centres of all the different grades. Lots of the pieces go into the different techniques 
and there's the different shape of scales and also each different grade having its each diff its different requirement so for example at grade three we have a lovely piece of music called the roundabout which is introducing the contrary motion scale really explore that sound the roundabout going round and coming back again and there's things like waltzing snakes it's really captures the imagination for our budding pianists also within the books there's a motivational scales chart so when you've, you've covered all of the aspects of the book at the back of the book you can tick the box to show that what you've been practicing at home and it's really encouraging pupils to practice with tips and hints and showing the scale requirements for each grade and inspiring people to have compositions of their own, really getting into the tune factory. So it's jam packed with lots of ideas for pupils to take away with and particularly students who perhaps their parents aren't musicians and it really guides you through the requirements and all of the different elements of scale practice with various patterns and fingerings and starting scales on different notes. There is also the Piano Scales Trainer, which is an app for grades one to five, where you can explore your scales in a different way. Here you can find notation of the scales. There's a metronome, you can hear the scales played, you can record yourself playing scales. And there's also a very handy bar chart showing how many times you've looked at each scale and just seeing which ones you may have neglected. There's also a fantastic feature where you can jam along to a backing track while playing your scales and this comes on and you're counted in and you get to play the scale a couple of times with a fantastic backing track as well. You can change the metronome, play them fast or slower, it gives you an idea of what the speed we're looking for in the exam is and it's a fantastic way for candidates to engage with scales in a slightly more enjoyable way and you can put it on your iPhone or on your iPad or any other device that, that, that's compatible. There's been a question about why we've removed broken chords from our scale requirements from January the 1st, 2021. One thing I would say straight away is you can still do broken chords in your lessons. It's really important to remember this, that the exams are assessing meaningfully certain things and there are lots of technical exercises and other things you'll do in your lessons that won't be assessed in the exam. So if you're a fan of broken chords, of course, keep doing them. It's just they're no longer part of the exam syllabus. I think there was a feeling that they were duplicating arpeggios to a certain extent. And we've got this wonderful progressive syllabus now that takes our scales gently and gradually and, and progresses through the grades and from the initial upwards with the broken chords appearing only in the first few grades and then disappearing, this didn't really feel a natural part of that progression through the grades. So they are gone, but do keep playing them. So we have had a question about why are scales important? We know scales are important because they form the absolute backbone of the structure of so much music written for the piano. They really help to improve your dexterity and your geography around the piano, the whites and the blacks, the key centers, the key signatures. It gives you that fundamental knowledge of what music is and what it's about. It really helps with the speed of learning and having shortcuts by recognizing patterns and taking patterns and using them in your sight reading and learning a new piece. One of the things that practicing scales really helps is to develop a practice structure so that when you're at home in your own studio, practice room, lounge, kitchen, that you're able to formulate a, a structure to your practice and warm up your fingers with scales, warm up the muscle groups 
and really, really work towards understanding what the scales are, calming our brains down to then get into some really good practice for the pieces, having had that knowledge of the scales and all the fundamentals in place firstly. We've had a question next about how to get students excited about playing scales, a really important question for all of us who teach piano. I would say that the two resources we've talked about, the Piano Scale Trainer and the um, Scale Explorer books from grade one to five are really good ways of starting to get students excited. It's something a bit different and especially in the Scale Explorer books where you can you do improvisation, looking at the tune factory, do short pieces of music based on scales, there are workouts, warm-ups. It's like a kind of workbook with different activities. And I think that's the key, different activities. Be creative. For instance, why not play the scales in a different mood? Explore moods, explore musical elements like that. Speed, slowing up, speeding up, slowing down. I think that variety will really help. And these books and the app are a starting point for you to go on yourself and think of all the different ways. Make sure scales are there in every lesson at the beginning, maybe as a warm up at the end as a reward even. See how scales are relevant in the pieces students are playing, not just because they're in the same key, but also see where scales feature in the music students are playing and show them the relevance. And I think very quickly they'll start to see scales not as a separate thing, but as something integral to everything they're doing. So we have a question about the benefits about scale playing other than just technical benefits. Obviously scale playing really helps to improve your listening skills with the oral tests and your reading skills with the sight reading. It really helps to prepare you mentally for a good practice session, particularly warming up the muscle groups and helping to reduce injury. But one of the things that practicing scales helps you be able to control the the crescendos and diminuendos within a phrase and as we know with some of the pieces in the scale explorer book that have really gone and taken this idea of shaping scales which is something that the examiner is looking for in the pieces and practicing going up and down within a scale we can practice all of these various elements within our scale practice which is not just talking about dexterity and learning patterns so an example of this is the winter jasmine in the grade four scales explorer so far the the scales explorer is grades one to five but this is the grade four winter jasmine question is about what examiners look for when we're listening to scales. Well, to start with, accuracy, of course, we like them to be rhythmic and even tone and at the right tempo as well, because of course the tempo requirements do go up as we got the grades. But there is more than that, and um, that'll get you quite a way, but if you're looking at really the higher end, the best scale playing, we're looking for musical shaping as well. We're looking for something beyond the mechanical, a sense of direction and really like the pieces we like a musical and fluent performance and i think it's good if the more musical approach we can have to scales the better really and seeing that they are a musical activity as well as anything else and i think that's what we really look for at the very best scale playing so we've had a question asking whether the examiners will be asking fewer scales now 
The answer is no, they won't be asking fewer scales, but the actual ratio of scales that the candidate will have prepared to the ones that they will have been asked is a much more positive ratio rather than preparing multiple keys and only be asking, uh, being asked one major, for example, or one minor, like you would perhaps in a grade five exam. The candidates are preparing specific keys and the examiner will ask within that group. So they will be preparing, uh, the scales will be more likely to be asked the ones that they've been preparing. The other thing that's a really great thing is that the actual requests are going to be much clearer. Sometimes in the exam, as an examiner, you are asked for a scale hand separately and the candidate has been diligently practicing it hands together and they look a little bit bemused and perplexed by the request. So it's very clear as to which, which scales are hand separately and which scales are hands together. We've had a question about how we get students to study scales as part of an ongoing process, if you like a curriculum for scales. I think the crucial thing here is about doing scales in every lesson, of course, and having scales embedded in what you do. Obviously, you need to think about the order you might do scales. And of course, the progression through the grades shows you a really nice way of doing that anyway. But of course, if you're having a term to prepare for an exam or something else, then you should be thinking perhaps about what scale would you do first? Would you do just one hand if it's a scale together? Will you just do five notes? The Scale Explorer books have some good ideas as well about how to break down the scales. I think planning is really crucial for that and making sure that we know if we're on track or behind and thinking about when we come back to scales again that we started with perhaps a few weeks before, consolidating the learning and making sure we revisit scales. So I think some planning is really important and making sure that the students are used to them being in every lesson. And one important thing to emphasize really is that scales are just part of your technical armory. And we should do these things because they're good for us. They link to everything we do as musicians, playing pieces and learning music, even if you're not doing an exam. In fact, many of you will be aware of our new performance grades, which are starting in the autumn, where there isn't a requirement to play scales. That's not to say that scales aren't important. So we would still want to prepare our candidates and our students with these excellent technical foundations, even if they're not being assessed in an exam at all at any point. In fact, many of us who have been playing the piano a very long time still play scales. I had a question about what happens if you miss out a grade. All of the scales are covered, all of the majors and minors in grades one, in one to five, and again, at six to eight. So if you do happen to miss out an exam, then and miss out a grade, then the scales will be covered in that time. As you know, it's not a piano curriculum, the piano syllabus, and we will be supplementing your scales within your lessons like you would a Hannon or a Cherney or a Chopin study. So you can find the ways of practicing these scales even if you do happen to miss a grade. There's been a question about how we've chosen the scales and arpeggios for each grade. Well, it's been done through a really exhaustive process and lots of consultation of teachers and experts in the field. So there's been lots of thought that's gone into it. There are some really clear fundamental principles and the best thing to do if you really want to see how it all hangs together is to look at the guide to the new requirements. It's a fantastic guide which takes you through each grade. It tells you how one grade moves on to the other. It tells you what the rationale was and there's a fantastic chart at the end which shows you when each scale and arpeggio is introduced the first time and when it's revisited. The fundamentals of lower grades are clear. It starts with smaller ranges, with simpler patterns and always six separate hands first and then the next grade you'll find the same scale hands together and it works through like that up to about grade five and then grade six to eight you get four scales per grade so you're focusing on key centers and you'll cover all scales again between six and eight but if you refer to that guide you'll find it really explains very clearly how one scale in each grade moves on to the other and how everything is covered over the eight grades and the initial as well. Thank you very much for all your questions. We've really enjoyed answering them and I hope that you found some useful information about the new scale requirements that starts on the 1st of January 2021 and some ideas about how you can uh, do scales with your students and get scales to be exciting, relevant and important as they are. 
If you want any more information about the new requirements, do go to abrsm.org piano, where you can find links to all sorts of resources and many of the things we've been talking about today. Thank you very much.